Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Space City Rottweilers podcast. I am your captain, your host, your main man, Mr. C-O-R-E-Y. And I got my co-host with me, my, my main girl. What's up with it, JoJo? What's up, Corey? We're back. How you doing? I'm all right. I'm all right. How about yourself? I'm doing good. I can't complain, man. Today has been a day. Um, I uh, I ended up going to Deucent Park this weekend. Uh, oh. And whew, we ended up trekking like along, like really hiking within the woods along the river of like Lake Houston. For, uh, we have a Lake Houston? Yeah, we have a Lake Houston. Yeah, it's on the north side. Oh, that's, <laughs> I don't know about it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> Shout out to all my folks on the north side. That's a whole nother world over there. All right. That's so true. So true. But I ended up going through the woods, man. You know, there was a little mud that I had to walk through. And one thing led to another, and I ended up falling face first. Oh, whoa. So I have some cuts and bruises right now. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> You all right? You straight? I'm good. I mean, I have some cuts and bruises, which do sting a little bit, but uh, other than that, I'm good. It wasn't nothing too crazy to where I needed to head to the hospital, but... You felt um, felt kind of hard? Man, because <laughs> I was on like a little bit of a slant, right? And I was trying to go up the slant. Oh. It was a little slippery right there. So oh. as I was going up, I ended up stepping on one of the leaves. And then it became super slippery and it just gave out. Ooh. And then I ended up like hitting pretty much like the side of my, uh, well, like my ear. Like I ended up turning my head and then my he- my ear ended up hitting this uh, this little stump that was coming out of the ground. Ooh. I was like, no. And that's like it funny. hurt. It was definitely like a scene. I just was about to say that. <laughs> I'm that just, was definitely a scene, but uh, I'm good. Man. I have some scrapes and bruises, but I'm good. I really enjoyed myself. Man, make sure you, uh, you know, you, t- you take care of that. You clean that right with some alcohol and some, you know, Neosporin and, you know, lick your wounds up, man. Sorry, <laughs> but we, we, we glad that you, you all right, though. Yeah, I'm good. You know, I was really doing that because, you know, my birthday was on Wednesday. Oh, yeah, I know. Happy, yeah, so. happy, happy, happy birthday again. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. So, I, you know, I just wanted to do something, uh, just be out in nature and not really, well, not that we really can right now, you know, just go out and, and sit somewhere and get something to eat. But I ended up picking up a little lotus, too, which I don't know. Have you had lotus seafood before? <laughs> Shout out to Lotus Seafood, man. They, those my folks, man. All over the, uh, you know, I didn't know they had multiple locations. So which one did you go to? They do, yeah. I ended up going to the one right there on the uh, what's that, Braisewood? Yeah. And Yeah, that's the one. Yes, right. you know the spot, the area. Yeah, I yeah. Was right that's, over right, that's right by my house. I know. Yeah. I was right over. I was on that area today, so I ended up picking up from them. I still have some left over. It was oh. I, like my my what's that what's that saying? My eyes got bigger than my stomach. <laughs> yeah, man. I got too much. Man, that that boy shrimp and stuff used to used to be going in. I never had these crawfish. I know people used to go there to get their crawfish, but they they boil shrimp, and I think I used to get like their fish plates and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Is it still good? It was. <laughs> It was good. I just feel like I overdid it mm. because I'm like still super full right now. But it was it was really good. I ended up getting the the crawfish, uh, the fried crawfish with fries, and then I got the loud pack but without the sausage. Man, the <laughs> loud pack, man. That, <laughs> you know about that loud pack, man. Oh, ooh, 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 my taste buds just went. <laughs> Went crazy because you know I'm on this detox right now, so I ain't really been eating mm. like that. Just been straight fruits, vegetables, smoothies, and 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 and, and that's pretty much it. But uh, you know, it's a ten day detox, and I'm on day number six, so got a okay. couple of more days. But man, you didn't put that lotus on my taste buds. I'm kind of salivating right now, but 
That's all good. We're gonna move right past that, but uh let's do it. <laughs> shout, out, shout, out, shout out to everybody that, that, that know about that lotus and shout out to Lotus Seafood, man. Hey, if y'all willing to sponsor, we willing to eat <laughs> for sure. For Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. Well, what's going up with you, Corey? How's Zoe doing? Uh Zoe good, man. Zoe Zoe's getting big. She's she, she's she's grown pretty uh pretty fast. Uh accelerating, you know. She went to uh she actually went back to the vet yesterday to get her, her last round of puppy shots and you know, she she gained six pounds since the last time she mm-hmm. went to the vet. So Zoe's good, man. But um it's been pretty rough over here, man. Uh it's been pretty rough these past two weeks. Yeah. Uh, just go ahead and just dive into it, I guess. Uh, so you know I had this litter that was uh that that was you know to come mm-hmm. so we actually had the litter uh, but they came a week early and we ended up losing all of our puppies oh, yeah it, it was uh it was an experience um these things happen it, it it's not common uh it's kind of you can kind of Compare it to uh, like a premature baby. Sometimes, you know, baby come early, earlier than the date. And depending mm-hmm. on how far or how close they are to the date that they are due, it uh, that can determine how intense or how severe, you know, it is. And basically, with, it, with, their, with them being born a week early from their expected due date, it was intense when, it, when you come to the animals. Mm-hmm. And man it was rough it was rough and it was tough um because for one caught me off guard when she you know was delivering because i wasn't expecting puppies to be there that day so i mean i i I guess you can say i wasn't prepared but i was i basically had everything that i needed but i had not moved it into uh the area or the room that she was in yet and i was planning on doing that uh, the weekend that they were, you know, the weekend before they were supposed to come because she was actually supposed to go to the vet so we can know exactly how many puppies we were dealing uh, or were expected to have. Mm-hmm. So um, wake up in the morning, you know, doing my normal routine and schedule, you know, I had a baby monitor in there so I can hear for when it was time. All of a sudden, I, you know, I hear the, the, uh, the usual puppy sound in, in, in the whip room. I was like, wait a minute, that sounds like a puppy. Mm-hmm. And I stopped, paused, and waited for it to come again, and it kept going. And I was like, wait a minute, she's having puppies right now. So, you know, it kind of was a frantic stage, because like I said, I wasn't prepared, wasn't ready, uh, per se, but she had already delivered three puppies, which is cool. They were, you know, they all were, you know, alive, moving. She did, her, she did what she was supposed to do, cleaning them up, and you know what I mean, taking care of them. But she had just had those three, and it was she had, she had only had those three, and it was going on uh, two to three hours since the last puppy was doing. Anybody who's familiar with uh, puppies being born, that three hour, four hour range, and no more puppies, you kind of got a you know your your alarm supposed to go off if you know how many puppies she is uh, supposed to have. And at the, like I said, at the time, didn't know how many puppies she was having. So I was alarmed, but I wasn't alarmed because I thought maybe, hmm, maybe she's just having a small litter this time. She only mm-hmm. having three puppies. So uh, end up getting her together, getting the puppies together and taking her to the vet just to make sure everything was okay. Because like I said, I was under the impression that she just was going to have these three get to the vet they do x-rays on her she had already had three and i thought they were gonna say oh well she, she's done because i mean she pretty much didn't seem like she was in labor anymore she was her normal self like as if she didn't have any more puppies she was running around happy go lucky jolly 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 whatever mm, okay get to the vet they do the x-ray she has 11 more puppies inside of her oh my gosh so they they intervene and give her um a sh- shots that kind of help her contract mm-hmm. um 
And once they gave her the shots, maybe like 10, 15 minutes after they gave her the shot, she just started popping them up. Boop, boop, boop. Mm. She had, um, I think, after the shots, six came, mm-hmm. kind of like back to back, and, they, and she just was dropping them. Uh, and then she ended up stalling out again because she had a total of 13, 13 puppies, and that's a lot of puppies. So, um, for all my, 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 my mothers out there who've delivered babies, human babies before, uh, y'all know how it is. It can, it, it can be, uh, uh, exhausting. So she, she just was tired. You know what I mean? She had, you know, tired out and we still had a couple of more, a few more to go. I'm going to say maybe four more. So we end up being, you know, spending a whole whole day at the vet. Uh, you know, they gave us they they were courteous and gave us a room to, you know, kind of let her chill and relax, and you know, they let us deliver them there, which is the best place we could be. You know what I mean for for the the situation. So bam, she stalls out again. They give her another shot. She start contracting. She starts. Uh, she she delivered one or two more, and you know then she stalls out again. And I think she had like a total of three left. So I uh, started consulting with the doctors, and we were talking about maybe intervening and doing a C-section mm-hmm. because uh, you know people when you have big litters, C-section is the way to go to avoid the stalling and, you know, the possibly breaching of puppies and whatever. Uh, so we consulted, they they kind of got, they prepped her for a C-section, then she pushed out another puppy. So they were saying, well, she's still kind of pushing out puppies, so we don't necessarily think we need to go ahead and intervene and do a C-section. I was like, cool, if she's just throwing them out naturally, let's just let her do her thing versus having to go, because C-section is basically a surgery and they have to sedate her and all that other type of stuff and put her on a kind of different type of stress, you know what I mean? Right, and I wanted to ask you which one, you know, if it's the same for, uh, you know, for mammals or dogs, I guess, if uh, for them to have a C-section, if it's just as dangerous as it would be for a woman, if you know I, I would believe so, because yeah. anything, anytime you go, under the knife or in surgery, it's a possibility that you might not wake up. I mean, just because they have to sedate you and, you know what I mean? The actual cutting and all that stuff, the incisions and stuff is, 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 I guess, I'm not a doctor, but I guess that's like the easy part, but it's the whole mm-hmm. sedation and trying to wake up and let the medicine wear off and all that. But some of these other breeds, they require C-section only, like these bully breeds, because the heads are so big, Mom mm-hmm. won't be able to push a puppy out. You know what I mean? She can kill yeah. herself. So that's why, you know, those type of breeds, they do C-section. Okay. So, you know, they caught, because I, I end up leaving to go ahead and prepare, finish preparing the area for when the puppies get here or mm-hmm. get, come back come back to the house. So they call him and know that she pushed out another puppy. And, and around this time, it's getting closer to close up time. So it's like, it's crunch time and or decision making time. Like, do we want to go ahead and cut her open or go ahead and let her deliver naturally? So I decided to go ahead and just say, well, since she's still pushing them out naturally, we're not gonna go ahead and do a C-section. Let her just push these last two out. So you know, time goes on. They end up closing, and she still had the last two puppies in. So you know, end up bringing her back home because we thought maybe she can come home get a little bit more comfortable in, in an area that she's familiar with and maybe she just go ahead and throw the last two out. So do that, boom. A couple of more hours pass by. Now we have to go to the emergency vet because it's decision making time again. You know what I mean? And again, she all this time it, I mean, I'm tired, so I know she's exhausted. She delivered nine to ten puppies already. Uh mm-hmm. it's 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 decision making time again. She ended up throwing another puppy naturally. So it's like, okay. She just needs to relax, get a little bit more energy, uh, you know, let some of these puppies nurse, let some of these puppies feed, you know, mm-hmm. let her eat, drink some water, maybe, you know, chill out and relax. Um, 
and maybe she'll throw this last puppy. You know, it comes to that, and you know, by the end of the day, she ended up throwing the last puppy out, and I think we finished five o'clock in that morning, the next morning, and she had went into labor around seven o'clock the previous morning. So it just was an all day thing and, and it was exhausting. But all puppies were here and all puppies were alive and and, and were breathing and, and had made it. Mm. So, you know, I thought it just was why I got this big old litter. And I thought it was just gonna be, you know, as, you know, as normal and as regular. Mm-hmm. As scheduled, like how things normally go when you uh when I, you know, deliver these these puppies and I have this this litter. So boom, we done with that. Mom is chilling out, mom is relaxing. Puppies are cool, puppies are moving, puppies are eating. Next day, uh, some puppies start not looking so good, start not moving as well, uh, not really nursing on mom. So, okay, let me go prepare and get, and, and get puppy formula and, and, and the things that I'll need to kind of help them nurse. So mm-hmm. go do that. At this point, we're losing puppies. Wow. Uh, and they're kind of like going, like the first few just went. Uh, and it was just like, man, we lost, we lost one or two. Then boom you know, still got to keep on pushing and, and get these other puppies fed. Some of them have the strength to, to nurse and some of them have don't have the strength to nurse on mom. So we kind of got to like, you know, intervene and interject. Yeah. Uh, puppies are fine. Puppies are moving. Then all of a sudden, when it's time to go feed again, some puppies are not looking so good and some and some more puppies have, have passed. And, you know, wow. I'm, I'm, I'm going to end up we, I'm gonna get into get into all of it, but mm-hmm. just giving the story. So puppies just yeah. going, and it seemed like it it was kind of kind of heartbreaking just because they're dying, but it was kind of also confusing because the last time I saw these puppies, you know, they were lively and moving and making noises and 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 all this stuff, and you know, nursing, and then it just kind of catch you off guard when you go back, and they just ice cold. Yeah. So that happens, uh, you know, back and forth uh, in a total of four days, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to say three to four days. We get down to only having one puppy left. Mm -hmm. And she, we, 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 at this point, we, we, we stopped letting her nurse on mom, per se. Cause we wanted to make sure that she was good. Uh, we started at, by this time we had started weighing the puppies and making sure that they were, you know, gaining weight. And she, she and it was a female and she was doing good. She was doing well. She was nursing, she'll nap, she'll, you know, be moving around different spots and keeping them warm and all this stuff. And she finally goes on, um, on a Sunday. Cause all this happened. Uh, she delivered when in labor on Wednesday. Then uh, we tried to hold on to the last puppy and she didn't make it. She ended up going on Sunday. So by this time, I didn't already made contact with other fellow breeders that I know, let them know the situation. And everybody's just kind of giving me the like, wait, what? Wow, huh? You know what I mean? All these different responses. Yeah. And I end up talking to the vet and letting him know what's going on. The vet that did the actual surgical semen procedure. And this was the weekend. So I, you know, they they basically said, if this last puppy dies, I have to uh, put it in the refrigerator and bring it in on Monday so they can do an autopsy. Because at this, at this point, it's just a whole bunch of guessing games on what could have gone wrong and what was the issue. Right. So um, she passes on Sunday. Uh, Monday comes, we take her to the vet, drop her off. Um, you know, I'm waiting all day just to hear and see what comes out of the autopsy. So, bam, vet calls me back. They did the autopsy. Nothing, nothing irregular, as far as no infections, nothing of that such. Just that the puppy just kind of looked at. They, 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 he basically said this puppy was smaller than what he was expected. Yeah. Expecting. 
So basically, the puppies were premature. Yeah. So now I'm going to get into like what 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 should happen. So I needed to go through this experience so I can be better prepared. You know what I mean? I'm still still learning and still new to this, but you know that was one hell of an experience to go through. You know what I mean? It was kind of traumatizing. It was almost like, man, second guessing on, do I really want to do this, continue to do it? And it's, these are just, you know what I mean, thoughts in the back of your head because it's just, it's hard losing life. You know what I mean? And you're, I'm doing my best to try to save them. You know what I mean? And it, and when they go, it's just, it's sad. You know what I mean? And Sweet too. Huh? And that quick too, the the fact that you were losing them that soon and like that right. fast. Right. And like looking at mom, mom, I can tell, you know, her body language, she's sad. She like, where are my puppies? She wants to see her puppies. You know what I mean? And it just, it just was all bad. Everybody was just feeling bad. Uh, I didn't, I was, you know, wasn't sleeping cause you had to wake up every two to three hours to, you know, feed them. So it was like, you know, lack of sleep and it, 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 it was rough. But so basically, they were born prematurely. And any time that you have puppies that are premature, you uh, you need a setup to where it's almost like an intensive care unit or like a NIC unit for when babies are born prematurely. So I, uh, incub puppy incubator is 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 needed. Uh, you know, oxygen uh, is needed. Um, the incubators, you know, to keep them warm because anytime puppies are born, they have to stay warm. Most of the time they, they, they can be warm with mom. Mm -hmm. But, you know, some people use heating lamps. Some people use heating pads. Some people actually have incubators on hand. And, you know, they just help them keep them warm and keep them, you know what I mean, alive. And the oxygen is so they can continue to breathe in clean air. So never knew anything about an incubator because I never really had to deal with a premature litter because these puppies were basically born a week early, a, a, a whole seven days before they were expected or their due date. And that's not common. You might have a day or two or even three days, not so alarming, but seven days, that's pretty early. Yeah. Uh, so, have you, what did the, did you? I know you said you spoke with the other breeders. Did had they dealt with that before? Not a whole seven days. Everybody kind of was like, "Wait, when did she do?" You know what I mean? Like maybe, maybe four days out. It, it kind of seemed like it was the average from talking to these other breeders. But that that's still not as alarming as a whole seven days because. Right. They when 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 dogs conceive conceive and and they actually get pregnant they 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 stay pregnant for nine weeks so nine weeks is total I mean it can be equivalent to like nine months of of a, of a human pregnancy so these puppies were born on week number eight so that's like a baby being born on month number eight you know what mm -hmm. I mean they yeah. they may not be fully developed and 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 in this case with these puppies they weren't fully developed. So that's why you have to have the incubator and the oxygen because those that last week and those last few days is vital because it still gives them that extra time to develop. You know what I mean? So basically, all these puppies were born pretty much not all the way fully developed. So their lungs might not have been up to full capacity or any type of organs probably wasn't necessarily fully developed because in some cases you might have when puppies are born they have like a droopy face mm -hmm. all my puppy or or hairless all these puppies were you know they look like puppies because like i said we the puppies that were delivered at the vet you know they looked at them and they said everybody was okay everybody had hair everybody had fur so this led me to believe that it was internally something wasn't fully developed inside of them yeah uh or their lungs just wasn't strong enough to be able to uh you know survive without that 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 extra boost of that oxygen you know what i mean so 
it was hard. It was rough. You know, I, I that that pretty much was the story on, on, on losing the whole entire litter, but and I just was a summary version of it. You know what I mean? I wish I could have documented or thought of, thought to document it the whole entire time, but I wasn't expecting that. You know what I mean? Because I mean, you have some cases where when you have a litter, everybody doesn't necessarily make it. You know what I mean? You still might have some undeveloped puppies when puppies are being born on day 63 or whenever they should have been born. Uh, just because depending on the procedure or the, or the process that you did with the, the breeding, if you did a live breeding, if you did surgical uh, with frozen semen, if you did artificial insemination, uh, they ovulate multiple times and then, you know, kind of get into biology or science a little bit when you ovulate that's when the egg and the sperm and all that stuff come together and you might have done this on a tuesday i'm, I'm gonna use a live breeding you might have did a live breeding on tuesday that sperm might not admit that egg until thursday so you kind of gotta start your your counting at that Thursday, yeah, you did it on Tuesday, but you don't count Tuesday because you got to give that egg and that sperm time to connect. You know what I mean? And they, they, uh, like I said, they ovulate numerous of times. And let's just say you was able to do a tie or or insemination, and you know what I mean. She took the sperm, but you probably caught one of the early ovulation cycles to where you know what I mean. This first group, like think about it, like. Lunch time, you got A, B, C lunch, you know what I mean? You got you got the A group, you got the B group, you got the C group. And yeah, it's all one litter, but everybody doesn't necessarily develop at the same time or at the same, the same, uh, what's the word I wanna look for? Everybody develops at their own pace, at their own time, basically. Yeah, so, everybody so, at their own time. Right, right, right. And with her having 13, you know, all 13 didn't develop at the same time. You know what I mean? So uh, that's how, like, you get sometimes undeveloped puppies. Everybody doesn't develop at the same time. And with her having so many, so many puppies, 13 is a lot. You know what I mean? That, that's a lot for, 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 for her to deliver. So most times, if not all the time, when breeders hear a certain number they like oh well okay let's go ahead and schedule a c-section because it's gonna be rough on her you know what i mean the c-section is the safest route to go so she does so you don't run into the problem with her getting tired and tiring out you know what i mean because that could be bad as well you know and she tired out and decide i don't want to push push any more puppies out but a puppy ready to come out but she's not willing to push the puppy can die in the sack you know what i mean and the puppy die in the sack and he's they have some more siblings behind them, everybody else can die and then mom could die. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, so if you have, if you know for sure that you having a lot of puppies, go ahead and schedule a C-section. You know what I mean? It, 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 it's easier and it's, it, you know what I mean? Everybody's protected in a way and, you know what I mean? Let the doctor do the thing and, and you know, mom, mom will have to do all that work on her own. Do you know what that limit would be? Up to like, like if you have eight, go ahead and do a C-section or would you do 10? What do you, do you know what that number would be? I, I would say know your, know, know your female. If you know your female can, can, can whatever, if, if this is not her first time and not your first time and, you, and she delivered eight on her own easily and was fine, go ahead and let her do it. If she delivered 10, and, and was fine, go ahead and let her do it. But if she delivered however many and you saw that she was struggling towards the end, then that's when you should go ahead and have a number in your head, like, okay. And you know, that's, that's you're supposed to tell the doctor, you know what I mean? All right, she she had a litter before. She had, let's just say she had 11. Mm -hmm. She kind of struggled with nine, 10, and 11. So I think, you know what I mean? We should go ahead and just go ahead and do a C-section so she doesn't have to worry about doing all that. So. It's not necessarily a number, it's just whatever that particular 
dog can do. For what she can handle, pretty much. Basically. Okay. So, yeah, man, and it, it's it's been hard around here. Like um, that, like I said, that experience on it's not. It, it was traumatizing, but I mean, it happens, and it and, and it comes with the territory of being a breeder. And like I said, I I use this as a learning lesson, mm -hmm. so I can be better prepared for if I run into this situation again. I pray and hope that I don't have to go through this again. Yeah. But if uh, one of my females decides that she wanted to deliver her puppies a, a couple of days early, you know, I will have my incubator. I will have the oxygen. I will have a syringe, or I will have the two to to help with the nursing process or you know getting the puppy strong enough to where they can nurse them up. I will be better prepared. So I you know what I mean I'm using this as a learning lesson as and as a stepping stone to continue to move forward and progress. Um you know I appreciate all uh, my people who who um uh, you know I put deposits down and was looking forward you know to their you know what I mean their 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 new family member being with them within the next couple of weeks, but, um, you know, I appreciate y'all patience. I appreciate the understanding and, you know, it's just one of those situations that just happened, man. And, you know, it, it was no way of, you know, predicting this. So, I mean, kind of had to go through this to, you know, to better Space City Rottweiler so we can know how to, you know, be better in the future. Yeah. Yeah. That's, 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 like as long as you learn the lessons of what to do better next time yeah you know, like you said, being prepared and having those things around just in case if the puppies would need it at that time right yeah i'm sorry to hear that corey oh, I man. Know you're expecting them, but yeah i appreciate it it's... yeah that the next that next litter will uh they'll make up for for this one and i mean i know uh I wouldn't even know how to say it as far as like in puppies' terms. Like I know they would have been a great litter, a, a great litter, but you know the next pack will be will be a different good batch. For sure, for sure. And it was like um, like that last puppy. We kind of had, and I you know I told myself don't do this, but it's pretty pretty hard to not. But that last puppy, we kind of we we kind of attached ourselves to her, you know what I mean? Because we were all work. I mean, me and my, my 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 team, we was working together to really save this puppy, and like we, you know, we was preparing for a name for her, and like she was gonna have a story behind her. She was gonna be like our star child or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, when she when you know passed, it was it was rough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, I, you know, it was already rough when we was nine down and four left, you know what I mean? It, 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 it was hard, man. Like, got choked up a couple of times and it just, it just was sad, man. But, you know, I, you know, I know these type of things happen. And, you know, this could be a learning lesson for somebody else who, you know, up and coming with the, with the breeding process or even the experienced ones who n might not have necessarily been through this. I mean, do your research and study, man. And, you know, I study different things, but I wasn't aware of this is something to study about. What ifs, you know what I mean? This right. is a what if that I didn't know that was out there. So, you know what I mean? That, that opened my mind to like, okay, how many different what ifs is out there? You know what I mean? Like, I kind of got to be a, 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 a veterinarian on the street, I guess. So like, you know what I mean? Do, do other type of research and outside of the breeding process with the Rottweilers or any other dog. Look into the, the actual medical side of it or what if this happens? Like how do you uh, quick fix or stitch a dog up if you have to step in emergency or you know what I mean you can't mm -hmm. of course you always want to let the professionals do it but like in certain in, in, in certain cases like let's just say we out of town and on the road like what if something happened at that moment like what should I do you know what I mean right or how should I be better prepared like of course I wouldn't necessarily take a female on the road that is you know due to have puppies but like 
let's just say I was in that situation that I had to, that incubator uh, would be uh, something to definitely have because they have portable ones to where they don't necessarily just plug into an outlet on the wall, but you could plug it into a cigarette lighter. You know what I mean? And you can have that for if you have puppies and you need to take them to the vet, you can plug that incubator in your car through the cigarette lighter. Right. And I wanted to ask, I mean, if you think that what, what, you know, what was going on was more so internal uh, and that and the vet didn't really see anything, then how would you know? Like, I guess, like, what would be that next step in order for you to know that something's going on with your pups? Just you finding them how you were finding them that day? Uh, yeah, just, just the eye test, I mean, because uh, puppies supposed to, supposed to move, supposed to be breathing. Uh, some of them make noise, like they, they whine, you know what I mean? Because, you know, when they're born, they don't necessarily, well, not necessarily, but they can't see or hear until what, week two, week three is when their eyes and ears start opening up. Mm-hmm. And, you know what I mean? They just go off of feeling on things, you know what I mean? Because, like, if you ever seen, like, a, a, a litter, everybody's on top of each other because they're, you know what I mean, they're feeling each other. They're feeling everything, and, yeah. And they feel around for mom. So, like, when they're trying to nurse, they're just feeling around. And what's this? Oh, this is a this is a nipple or whatever. And, they, you know what I mean? They, oh, that's, that's good. That's milk coming out of that. So, like, just paying attention to the puppies. If you see one uh, not necessarily moving, not necessarily breathing, uh, if you pick them up and they're not warm and they're getting a little cold, mm-hmm. then you know something is wrong because they they always have to be warm. You have to keep them warm. They have to be in in, in if they're not with mom, they have to be uh, somewhere in some type of whatever type of setup you have. They they constantly have to have some type of heat on them. So that's how you will know something's going on if you pick a puppy up and they're limp, they're not breathing as much, and they're cold. So from that from that point, would you just rush them over to the vet or the emergency room? Um, no, no, unless it's it's really needed. Like first, you step in and you know I mean get that puppy warm, get that puppy moving. Maybe maybe it's hungry and having ate. It maybe it's one of the weaker ones having found its way to the nipple. You kind of help it nurse. You know what I mean? You put the you 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 know you squeeze the nipple to let the milk come out. Let them. You know what I mean? Put put that particular puppy on the nipple if it's strong enough to to eat off mom. Let it. But if not, go ahead and intervene with the with the uh, the puppy formula. With the some people use syringes. Some people use tubes. Uh, when puppies are early, they some people recommend that you go ahead and use a tube because you don't necessarily. Uh, it's not force feeding, but you can actually drown a puppy, and they can aspirate and like you know, and you can kill them that way. To where you know, I mean, you're giving them the milk too fast; they're not digesting it. So some people say that the tube is better because you can control them more versus pushing a syringe, and you know, I mean, they can aspirate and you know, what I mean, suffocate on the milk or or basically drown on the milk. Yeah. Did you experience that though, where um, where you, when you did pick them up, that they were uh, that they were cold? I guess in in enough time. Like, if you do experience that, do you just go straight to the vet, or do you just feed them? Um, if they're cold, it might not necessarily be that they're hungry. They might just not be catching, you know, the heat from whatever the, the setup you have. You just either, you know, warm them up with your hand, you, you know, you rub them, you know what I mean, stimulate them, uh, get them moving, get them warm, and you just place them in uh, a different spot or uh, you know, place them in the spot to where they, they can get heat. Okay. Uh, but if you pick them up in their coat and they're not moving, they, they're, they're lifeless, basically. They're what? They're lifeless. If they're, they're if you pick them up in their coat and they're not moving, you don't feel them breathing, or oh, yeah. moving. you don't hear a heartbeat, that means that they, that they already have passed. Yeah. Like, the first two weeks are very vital when it, when it comes to comes to delivering puppies. And you know what I mean? This this can be a learning lesson for some people who are saying that they want to breed. I mean, if you listen to this story I and mean, you you know that you can't handle this, 
you know what I mean, you might want to second guess or, or, or give it a second thought that, you know what I mean, I might not necessarily want to be a breeder because it's, it's, it's a lot that goes into it and you have to be prepared for it. You know what I mean? It's, it's not just, you know, getting dogs, letting them mate, letting them breed. You have puppies, you let them go home. Nah, it, 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 it's a whole lot of other stuff that go in between that. I mean, you're going to lose some sleep. Uh, you know what I mean? You're going to have to be patient. You're just going to have to just, you know what I mean, dedicate your time to it. This is not no part-time thing. It's a full-time job, per se. I mean, because you're dealing with life, you know what I mean? And I think that's the that's that's the the main thing with me was, was why I was a little down because it was losing life. You know what I mean? I don't. You know, some people get into this 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 type of business for for quick money and you know what I mean ca- cash cow on these dogs, but that's not why I do it. You know what I mean? I, I I really love this breed and appreciate this breed, and you know what I mean. I want to help the breed continue to move forward, but like. If you in it for like the quick money and all that, I you know I I I wouldn't agree, agree uh, approve and agree with you doing that. Yeah, I mean, but you know those people will slip through the cracks. Oh, for sure. It's you just want to make sure that you do have the the right amount too that are doing it for the love of the breed. Right. You just want to get back into it like you so. Cause I mean, if you are doing it for for the the money or the quick money, just think about all the time and the the the, the, the dedication that you have to make for that quick money. Mm-hmm. I mean, you really want to continue to do this each and every time. Like, let's just say this particular female always delivers these huge litters like that. Like, yeah, you're doing it for the quick money, but you're gonna spend money, and you know what I mean. You're gonna lose time. You know what I mean. Are you really going to be dedicated to do that? You know, because you got some people that just out of that thirteen, as long as they can get three, you know, what I mean, they don't care. You know what I mean, and that's that's a wrong way to look at it because that's life. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if that doesn't affect you losing life, there's something wrong with you. You know what I mean? Oof, that's a hard number to put up there. Right. Wow. They only care about that three, and then don't even worry about the rest. Right. My goodness. Like, what kind of person are you? Yeah. But um, I appreciated the 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 experience and the moment. I wish it wouldn't have happened that way, but I needed that to you know what I mean. Tighten up on my game and be 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 a better breeder and 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 be a better producer of of uh, of these dogs. And you know it. I don't want somebody to hear this story and think, uh, like, you know what I mean, something wrong with my dogs or anything like that. No, it's just one of those situations that happen. I mean, and, and it is ways or things that could cause, uh, you know, your female to go into labor early. But uh, I don't think it was particularly that. I mean, because if it was something, you know, the vet would have caught it, you know what I mean? Because they did blood testing, they... On, on mom and everything was fine, no infection, none of that. She, you know what I mean? She was her normal self. Uh, you know, the puppies didn't have any type of infections or anything like that. It's just one of those things that just happened, you know what I mean? And it kind of just goes into this whole year, man. It's just things that's been happening and, and, and the craziness that's been going on, you know what I'm saying? It kind of it kind of fit the whole 2020 thing, like, wow. What else could happen? You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what? Yeah, that's so true. I mean, this is pretty much the year of like learning lessons and uh, paying attention to the things that are happening to you and around you, and and how you react to it and what you can learn from it, and and you know, just being a better person uh, all around from and- all the lessons that are being learned from. So, like, yeah, it definitely fits into the year. And it fits into the year with how to be prepared for the unknown. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it definitely fit into that. But yeah, man, it's, it's chunk it up as a as as a, as a twenty twenty thing, man. Um, you know, yeah. we 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 get ready to step into the last quarter of the year, but uh, we will be better. I know we will be better. We are already better because we learn from it. You know what I mean? I would I would be 
crazy to not have learned from this experience and continue to do do the things that I've been doing. I'm like, oh, I ain't worried about it. You know what I mean? It's just something that happened. Nah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It, it, yeah. Uh, it's a setup for something better. Something better is coming along. It's just right now, learn the lesson, then the next best thing will come along. Cause when we well when we talked, I told you I, I you know I kind of let you know like you know something was going on over here, but I didn't let you know if it was good or bad. I wanted to wait till you know what I mean. I told you on here, and you know what I mean. Get your initial reaction. Like you listening to this, what went through your mind, and like how did you feel? I'm like, oh no, Corey done lost his litter. Like, I know you done already put in a lot of work, you know, making sure, uh, you know, your dog is good, that the mother is good, that, you know, she's in a well state to be able to deliver these puppies. And the fact that, you know, she ended up delivering them early, that's, you know, already a red flag. So uh, I, I just, I see it as a process, you know, it's a stepping stone, just one of the things you kind of have to go through uh, just to be able to, you know, continue to get better. Right. Through this business, like you said, you know, stuff will happen and through the stuff happening, that's when you'll learn, okay, I know not to do this next time, or I know I should have this prepared for next time just in case this happens. Right. So, you know, hearing that it is sad, you know, to hear that you lost that litter, but uh, I know that it's it's really just a stepping stone for you um, to go into that next level of where you're trying to take the the pretty much like your whole brand of with your dogs and and with the compound and just the life that you're trying to create uh, for the community with right. the community. Right. Yeah. Do you think you would have been able to handle that situation? Oh, I don't know, man. I know that would have been tough. That's a lot of puppy. That's a lot of puppies. Yeah. That's a lot of puppies. I know it definitely would have been intense. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I would have had to. You know, you got to step up and do what you got to do. Right. But it's just, it's just, uh, just thinking about the the emotional aspect of it, it's just, I can tell that that would be intense. You know, if your heart is in it like that. Right. If you're doing it for the right reasons, which I know you are, you know, it's just, uh, it's, I, I know it's an intense feeling, but and, you know, I, I would have stepped up to the plate, but it definitely would have been intense. And what's crazy, I'm sitting here thinking about my other uh, letters that I had in the past. Mm -hmm. Each and every one of my litters, I've been in the double digits with 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 puppies. Mm. A litter, I I I've yet to have a single digit litter yet. Yeah. So I mean, I mean it's a good thing, but at the same time, like with this experience, you kind of got to all right. Now I'm more alert and more alarmed. Like all right, man, it's a, it's another big litter. Uh, you know what I mean? Let me have this lined up. Let me do this just in case. You know what I mean? Like for now, like I know like how I would want to move in a situation. And of course, it's always good to get professional advice or consulting, but like they don't know your your dogs. So like they might not necessarily agree with doing a C-section, but you know your dog. So don't let them talk you out in to doing something that you want to do for the safety of your, your, your dog, her, her litter, and just the safety of yourself. And you know what I mean? Putting yourself in that type of situation. Mm -hmm. You are going through the heartbreak of, you know, losing your whole entire litter. And you know what I mean? God forbid, case that you might lose mom in that process is because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they had to give her like different, different things to kind of help her boost her energy because she was losing, I think she was, it, when you when she's delivering so many puppies, like she can be calcium deficient. Like it, it's uh, so many different type of deficiencies because she's pushing out thirteen puppies, so she's losing a lot of energy and a lot of nutrients and, and things like that. And she don't want to necessarily eat. She might drink some water, you know what I mean, just to get a little hydrated. But she don't want to eat, so it's like she's all these nutrients are it, it losing. And you know, it's almost like a, a mother delivering like 
delivering a, a, a baby, anything can happen. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They was, you know, telling me what I need to do just in case, uh, you know, she was lacking more calcium and like she could, she could have like started, you know, having seizures and, and things like that. And it's just like, man, I kind of went to bed uh, or took a little nap more concerned about mine than the puppies. You know what I mean? It's like, man, I'm, I'm losing puppies and I could possibly lose mine. It just was a, a, a uncomfortable feeling, man. And you know what I mean? You, you, you trust and the uh the professionals to give you you know what i mean their best uh advisement you know sometimes they they have a script that they need to stick to and that's something else that i learned you know what i mean when it comes to uh going to emergency vets they have a protocol that they follow you know what i mean like they kind of scare me but then you know talking to some of my my, my breeder friends or my my, my breeder partners they let me know, like, oh, you know, the emergency vets, they, 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 they will tell you that because they're only used for emergency purposes. You know what I mean? So, like, they, they have their own protocols that they, that they have to follow, or like, they, yeah, they'll tell you that because this is what they do. You know what I mean? This is, this is, this is what, you know, what I mean, how they, how they do these type of things. And you know what I mean? It's always good to get a second opinion, whether it's with yourself or with your animals or with anything that you do. You know what I mean? So, like. Her, her regular vet might not have recommended a thing at the emergency vet because it was going to come to a decision where, it, you know what I mean, it could affect her for the rest of her life. And, you know, it was four or five o'clock in the morning and I couldn't, you know what I mean, I could have called somebody and woke them up out their sleep, but, you know what I mean, I try to be considerate, uh, you know what I mean, try to hurry up and get a second opinion, but, you know, I'm glad that it happened the way it did because, you know, at that time and in that intense moment, I could have made a, a decision that I, you know, I would have regretted or I could have, have avoided, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But just going by what they was telling me. But, you know, everything happens for a reason. I know that's a cliche thing, but it really does. And, you know, we just moving forward and moving past it. But, yeah, I mean. How long was she in the process of delivering? What you mean? Like she was putting out, you know, thirteen pups. Was it twenty four hours, forty eight hours? I know you said you ended up going to sleep. It was probably like uh twenty twenty two hours. Like like I said, she went from seven. I'm I'm assuming seven that morning because like when I first went there, she had already delivered puppies, and this was roughly about to be eight o'clock so she she went mm -hmm. into labor you know around seven seven ish you know what i mean or seven thirty ish eight ish whatever all the way till last puppy was born at a little bit right before five o'clock that morning the next morning so from mm -hmm. okay okay 7 a.m that whole entire day going into the next day on Thursday, five o'clock in the morning, last puppy was here. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was very long, yeah. long labor. Tired. Man, like I, you know, I've heard some mothers say that they were in labor for eighteen hours. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just. I don't know, man. It's just that circle of life type thing. I guess. Yeah. I can't never understand it because I, you know, I can't deliver no baby. You know what I mean, but mm, man, uh, just chunk it up as a learning lesson. I mm. mean, you've been delivering puppies, though, right? Huh? You've been delivering puppies. Well, I'm talking about me physically. Like, I don't know, know what my body would never be able to go through that. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh but, yeah, 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 yeah. Producing life. You know what I mean? I won't. I won't know that feeling. You know, I've been in the room. When uh, you know my kids were born, and it kind of was like, you know, one of those like, whoa. But I don't know what mom is feeling. <laughs> you know. What yeah. I mean? That's why I find it crazy when you know people try to tell these 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 women what to do. But you know, we ain't gonna we ain't, we ain't gonna get into all that. You know. Let them know, Corey. <laughs> let them know. <laughs> we gonna leave that alone, man. <laughs> let them know. But um yeah, y'all, uh 
that that that's that's how that went down. But have no fear, Space City Rottweilers. We 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 are definitely going to continue on and continue to get better, continue to grow. Uh, you know, we 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 still have a whole lot in front of us to conquer. I mean, our our future is bright. I don't I don't want to continue hit y'all with cliches, but you know, it, it's a lot of good things brewing in the pot. And you know what I mean? We we just we're gonna continue to push. Uh, we appreciate y'all for you know coming along for this ride and being a part of this process, man. But um y'all continue to just, you know, check us out, listen to us, follow us, you know, reach out to us, give us some feedback. Uh if you're a breeder and you went through something like this, man, I'd love to hear from you, love to hear you hear your story, love to hear, you know what I mean, any recommendations, uh anything that you hear that you know what I mean, that I can do or anything that you know that I can do to avoid this or, you know what I mean, just reach out, you know what I mean, let me know what's up. Um, yeah, man, uh, we can continue to put more content out, you know, I promise y'all I'm going to get get back on uh, these pictures and, you know what I mean, videos and things of that such on the page. Um, it's just been a lot going on over here. Of course, with the, you know, for sure with the story you just heard, that, you know, that on top of other things, uh, you know, it's hard kind of trying to move around and do things when, when, when the rest of the world is going through its own little, little situation, man. Shout out to all my people on the West Coast that's going through uh, all these wildfires, man. Hope y'all out there being safe. Mm -hmm. I hope y'all can, um, you know, get through this. Uh, everybody down here in the South, we dealing with, you know, we hurricane season. We got something out there in the Gulf developing that's supposed to be, you know what I mean, coming through soon. Uh, big up to all my people down there in the Lake Charles area and, and surrounding cities and towns that, you know, I just went through this 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 hurricane this, this past what what that was about two three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, prayers for y'all. Uh, prayers for you know what I mean that everything can get back to normal. Uh, everybody, uh, man, it's just a, it's it's crazy everywhere. I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm I'm I'm, I'm missing some things, but you know, y'all just be safe out there, man. And you know what I mean, let's continue to look out for each other, you know what I mean? And, you know, let's just be better people, man, for sure. It's just the beginning. We will keep going. But I want to say RIP, rest in peace to uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. You will be missed. As a lady, you know, I appreciate what you've done and the, the roads that you paved for us. So, a rest in peace to her. Uh, I'm gonna need for you to educate me. I, I, I who, 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 Ruth, Ruth who? Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She was the judge uh, for the Supreme Court, and uh, she, you know, did, she could go either way, but she was really more for the just the betterment of people, and she fought for women's rights and and just paved the way for a, a you know for women to be able to do certain things and she just passed away uh which now gives the person an office <laughs> i mean i don't really want to get into that but it just gives him room to put somebody else in office before he leaves which a lot of people have been fearful of mm -hmm. but uh that's just another part of 2020 that we just stepped into so I need to tighten up on my current events, man. I I kind of been in a, a little shell these past past week and a half. Uh, how did she pass, or or is it known? Was she older, or it just what? yeah? She was just it was just time. I mean, and she fought like cancer and beat it and like everything. But right now, I think it was just time. She was eighty seven years old when she passed, and uh, yeah. And she's a judge for the Supreme Court? Mm hmm. Mm. I believe Obama appointed her. Okay. His first or term, second term? Or if he didn't appoint her, uh, 
he ended up for sure like signing off on a bunch of of stuff that they agreed on together. I mean, they worked together. I mean, this is the Supreme Court, you know. So, right. He just did a lot of a, a lot of great things for women, and she just needed to be. I felt like she needed to be spoken on. Oh, that's what's up, man. Definitely. Uh, rest in peace uh, to her. Uh, you know what I mean? Prayers for, you, for your family, for your friends, uh, your colleagues. Uh, we appreciate everything that you've done. Um, hopefully somebody can, can pick up that torch and, and you know, continue to you know, f- fight that fight that you were fighting. And uh, you know what I mean? Step it up and you know what I mean push push it push it further. Mm-hmm. That's all we can hope for. But you know, better things are coming. Especially in the way that, you know, things are sitting right now. These are just lessons that need to be learned to be set up for a better path. Right. hmm Yeah, man. Uh you uh you got any more plans or any any new plans? For any any new parks, I know you went through through, through your experience today. Like you, you're not gonna let that let that deter you away from 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 nature and outdoors, are you? No, that's not gonna deter me. I mean, I mean, if anything, last weekend, uh, I tried to go to you know Pedernales Park that I was telling you about, but uh, some things ended up happening. We were we weren't able to reserve our spot because you know. Uh, for any Texas state parks, you have to reserve. You like you have to pretty much reserve yourself to get in there. That's great. You have a reservation, yeah. So we ended up going out there. We weren't able to get it reserved, so we ended up just kicking it. Uh, I went with a friend, and we ended up just kicking it in Austin since we were already out there. But no, that's not going to stop me from going out. I'll probably take a little break. I feel like I've been doing a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of outdoorsy stuff. Yeah. I kind of need to, like, come back home and, and, and kind of, like, recharge. So next weekend I probably won't do that, but there's always another weekend that I can take advantage of it and just go back out to a park. Man, see, if you would have had your dog by now, man, your dog could have helped you uh, avoid the slippery, <laughs> the, sip, the slippery slope of hiking. How? <laughs> you would have been How? Whole- I mean, if you would have been walking with it with a leash, you would have <laughs> had something to hold on to and grab. And, you know, your dog walking in front of you, like, letting you know, hey, uh, we coming up on something slippery. You might want to be careful. You know what I mean? Man, and then, look, I had my little stick. So I had the stick because I was trying to move away this branch. Yeah. And so I did that. But once I hit that one step and then I slid, it was over with. Man. I felt it as it was happening, and I was just like, no. <laughs> did it happen in slow motion, like on some of the movies? Yes, that's how. That's exactly how I felt it. <laughs> oh, man. man, man, man. Got to be. I know. I know. You, I know. you have on the proper equipment, the right shoes, the kind of shoes. I did, yeah. Oh, well, man. Some Nike shoes, but, I mean, they were good. It was just. Oh, that footing right there got me. But I'm good. That's not going to stop me. Man. I'll get back out there. That's just one of these little uh, war, wound, <laughs> war wounds, you know? It's part of the path. But you weren't by yourself, right? No, I was with a friend out there, too. All right, cool. No, I don't do those type of hikes by myself. Uh-uh. Man. Uh-uh. Well, I'm just glad somebody that was there with you. Yeah, that was deep in the woods too. We really were adventurous <laughs> today. Uh uh-uh. uh. You put me up on some new Lake Houston. I'm gonna have to look that up, man. Never. Mm-hmm. Oh, Corey, you remember that one time I tried to take you to the park and I couldn't find the entrance? Yeah. That's the park. I found the entrance. They cleaned it up. Okay, okay. okay. Everything looks a lot different now. I gotta take you out there. Man. Because I remember I just had to take you a while back, but I could not find the entrance because it's so big. Really? It's so big. But they cleaned it up and, like, uh, they've made markers everywhere where you know where you're going. So I couldn't miss it this time. Now, did you have to reserve to go to this no. park? No, for this one, you don't have to make any reservations. That's just if you go to, like, state parks. Mm, mm, mm. Like, because uh, I even wanted, I was trying to go to the Enchanted, the Enchanted Rock. And that's a, that's part of a state park too, so I couldn't even go there. Man, I didn't even know we had all this, bro. 
Man, we have a lot, Corey. <laughs> we have a lot. I know yeah. Texas is big, but I mean, all this stuff kind of sound like it's in a close vicinity, man. Like I didn't, you know, I've been to the Alamo and and, and stuff like that, but mm-hmm. outdoorsy things, I, you know, I would have never thought that we had things like this. Yeah, it's available. I mean, and I guess, I mean, you just have to be within that to know what's out there. Right. Because I think I went to, what is it called, Red Rock in uh, Colorado and Denver. Mm. I, I did that before. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, you know, as a kid, I, 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 you know, I went to like the Grand Canyon and, and, and stuff like that. And San Francisco walking the, the Gold, Golden Gate Bridge and all that. But I didn't know we had stuff like this right here in our backyard. You know, I would think to go to places like uh, Wyoming or Colorado or, you know what I mean, Washington. I didn't know we had parks like this. Mm-hmm. So I've been, I've been trying to like really look them up and just really take advantage of, you know, the state that I'm living in and explore its beauties and just immerse myself. Did That's you, been the plan, so. Did you see any sightings of, of anything at this park? Mm. Not like that, but I mean, alligators are always around. We passed up this uh, this man and this woman, and they had just told us that, that they saw an alligator. Like, it just started to creep up where they were. Man, wait, and, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, like, my friend made a funny remark. He was like, uh, oh, yeah, and I was thinking about, you know, going swimming in there. And the guy was like, oh, no, you don't want to go sw- swimming in there. There's a lot of things that you would come up, come back up with. So there's a whole bunch of like animals in there that you just don't want to mess with. But you know, people take their canoes out there, their boats. Man, we got alligators out here, man. Yeah, what? Come on. I, <laughs> Come on. I did not know that. Yeah, they're out here. Man, I ain't playing with y'all, man. Like, <laughs> this this the same part you trying to get me to go to? No, <laughs> I'm good. No, but like, we weren't gonna we weren't gonna go that deep in. We no, I don't go care, deep. man. If they got alligators out there, ain't no telling what they <laughs> might have about that, man. I'm for sure bringing me a rock while with me. <laughs> might to beat you out there, pull up on you or something, man. Yeah. <laughs> man, that's crazy. An alligator, cause like uh, you know, I I, I, <laughs> I laugh at like people that live out in Florida. And, uh, you know, they have all these little cute dogs and they walk their dogs early in the morning and, mm-hmm. you know, they come up missing because, you know, Florida is infested with all that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. But, you know, this is at a park over here. But oh, out yeah, there, yeah, out like, here. They're, you know, they are living with you. You know, the alligators and stuff live amongst the people in Florida. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, they're out here. But I guess they kind of go to uh, Houston. One of the Houston nicknames is being Bayou City. So I mean, I'm sure. I'm um, uh, yeah. There are alligators out there. You know what I mean? Right. A lot of other things too. Right. But man, you just have to be careful. And I was like, I hope we don't run into any snakes out here. That was my concern. I ain't really tripping on the snakes. It's it's it's, it's the uh, you know the poisonous ones that are, you know. How how they say you have to look for a certain thing on a snake? Like man, I ain't waiting around long enough to see if that thing got a, a white spot on the head or like copper right. strike and all that. Like man, right. no, like I'm not, I'm not. It's like I'm not afraid, but the things in nature that can naturally just kill you just for being in nature, I'm good on that, man. <laughs> <laughs> Walking through the rainforest. I brush up against a certain type of bush and I look down on my arm, I got a, a gang of leeches on me just because they were Oh, angry. no. Man, like, man, that's the type of stuff you got to worry about when you're out there in that nature stuff, man. I mean, I know. You just have to be careful out there. That's why I had my little branch, you know, to, like, move stuff aside because we were for sure running into, like, a whole bunch of spider webs and we saw, like, big spiders on there, too. So we were trying to use that to kind of, like, whack our way through and like make sure it's a clear path but we weren't really trying to disturb the you know the land either not like that oh man i gotta watch yeah. you man you trying to get me out <laughs> <laughs> oh look at that look at the bird oh man 
You didn't put snakes, alligators, and spiders all in it, man. Listen, nah. I'm, you know, I'm being careful, but I'm still exploring. And all you got is a stick? Nah. <laughs> If I'm, I'm going to need another type of stick. I'm going to need one of the sticks that the rappers be talking about. <laughs> I have my stick. I sprayed some off and some sunscreen before I went out there. I was good. Nah, I need that other stick. I need that stick that got a clip with it. You know, some couple uh, of uh, look at you. I need, I, need, I need my Indiana Jones on. You never uh, know. You might run into a... A bear or a, you know a tiger or a mountain lion or something like that. Then not, you... not where I'm at. Not man, where I'm at. Man, look, it, hey, they out there. You never know what's out there. You never know what 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 might have migrated this way. Coyotes, uh, you know, mountain lions and whatever. Man, I know. well, I'm you know I'm still a, I'm still <laughs> waiting on seeing. Uh... I'm hoping to see Bigfoot on one of my little travels out there too. So hell no, nah, <laughs> I ain't going nowhere with you. <laughs> where we going? I'm, every time I go to you now, I'm questioning where, where, where we going. I'm, I'm gonna check out your outfit. Like man, what, what's the bandana around your neck, man? What what what, what you got on the day? What, oh my gosh. The, the Adventures of JoJo. <laughs> <laughs> Here, take this stick. Nah, man, what, what I'm going to do with this? Uh, <laughs> I mean, we're out here, you know? Just see what's up. <laughs> you out there. I'm right here. <laughs> but hey, man, hey, that's your thing. I'm glad that you're going through that experience. I can live live, live through you. You know what I mean? Let me know if we're we going to go to a, another type of park where we just sit down and picnic or you know what i mean we ain't gotta worry about <laughs> having sticks and things like that we just <laughs> well, well the- I mean, that's, that's if you want to go you know the hiking route <laughs> there's always like a little spot like i said they've they've done some uh remodeling and stuff to it too so they've added benches along the water and you can just sit there and catch fish and if you want and watch alligators nice. watch you yeah oh yeah they're gonna roll up <laughs> they they will definitely come up. Man, you just have to be careful. This sound intriguing, but not not really. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not for everybody. Man, you just opened me. Okay. You just opened my eyes up to 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 like man. I didn't like, like I said. I didn't know we had all this going on. <laughs> oh yeah, this is Texas. There's a lot going on in here. Man, and it's so big and so much. That just made me think about what the hell. I could have been around at Camp Cullen back in fifth grade or whatever. Mm-hmm. They had us going, doing, doing it, and around. But I don't know, man. Maybe we gonna have to. We might have to uh, pick a year or whatever. Do 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 some road tripping or something, man. You know, take 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 a rock wall or two with us on the road and visit different national parks or cities or state parks around us, man. You know. I'm without, down for that. We can do that. Sticks and boots and stuff like that, but you know, have mm-hmm. some extra layer of protection. Yeah, I'm down for that. Yeah. We'll work that out and make that happen. Yeah, but shout out to all my listeners or all of our listeners out there. Y'all, please continue to check us out. Follow us. Subscribe. Uh, we do uh, upload. The, uh, the video versions of this on on our on, on our YouTube channel at the Space City Rod Wallace YouTube channel. So y'all go ahead and go like and subscribe on there. Uh, we appreciate y'all for checking us out. Uh, you know, thank y'all for listening to my story. Again, uh, y'all reach out, give me some feedback. Uh, any experiences y'all y'all went through, or you know what I mean? If y'all just want to you know chat and holler, you know what I mean? Get at us at uh, you know any of our social media platforms or you know what i mean hit that line at 281-299-8998 we will be having uh more uh litters and breedings in the future uh have no fear like this this is this situation is not going to stop us from from continuing to grow and continue to move so y'all just stay tuned and you know appreciate y'all yeah thank you for listening to us we'll check y'all next time all right y'all peace bye